Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Ray Tampa podcast. Our podcast offers bold commentary on various subject matters by maintaining a laser-like focus on the truth. My name is Ray Tampa, and I'm the host of the Ray Tampa podcast. We have in our studio two talented and intelligent gentlemen, Mr. Russell Cato and Mr. Jamie Wilson III, my co-host. Also, we're very honored and pleased to have as our guest, Miss Judy Ellis, longtime president of the Lakewood Estates Civic Association. Miss Ellis, welcome to the Ray Tampa podcast. Thank you. It is a pleasure to be here. All right. Pleasure to be here. And certainly our pleasure that you're here. I'm rather certain, I'm rather certain that the overwhelming majority of our residents will agree with the following statement. Quote, strong families build strong neighborhoods. Strong neighborhoods build strong communities. Strong communities build strong cities. Strong cities build strong states. And strong states build a strong country. End of quote. Lakewood Estates Civic Association is seriously doing its part in supporting families and building a strong neighborhood. They have an impressive record of involvements and achievements that serve our city and many of the families well. Fortunate for us, Ms. Ellis is here to share information about all the great contributions this active association is making for the benefit of kids and adults alike. However, I want to ask Ms. Ellis to clarify for our audience members who may not know the following. Ms. Ellis, please share this information with our audience. Number one, geographically, what are the boundaries of Lakewood Estates in St. Petersburg? Uh, the southern boundary is 54th Avenue South. The western boundary is 31st Street South. The northern boundary is kind of a woolly area, sort of kind of around Lake Megory and about 35th Avenue South. And the eastern boundary is MLK. Okay. Pretty uh, definite boundary lines, yeah, 31st yeah. Street, 9th Street, 54th yeah. Avenue. And, yeah. and then uh, on the north, you got Lake Megory. So I'm asking, is Lake Megory generally considered a part of Lakewood Estates? No, Lake Megory is actually on okay. the other side of Boyd Hill Nature Preserve. And that is, in fact, our eastern border. We go right up to the right up to the nature preserve. The joke in Lakewood is if it lives in there, it lives in your yard too. So <laughs> if, you, if you don't like things that crawl and slither, you know, if you don't like watching an alligator go across your front yard, you're in the wrong neighborhood. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, about how many families or homeowners live within these boundaries? 1,660 to be exact. 1,660. Yep. Families or homeowners. Oh, oh homes. Yeah. Homes mm -hmm. in the Lakewood Estates boundaries. Right. Okay, good. <laughs> Do you have any information regarding the average income of the families living in Lakewood Estates? I don't have any <laughs> numbers. I can just tell you that by any definition, this would be considered a middle to upper middle class neighborhood. Okay. I uh it's around the golf course, you know, our, all of our houses are either close to or around the St. Petersburg Country Club. The golf course, you got quite a bit of property that is considered golf course property, right? Well, it's not us that got it. It's the St. Peter Country <laughs> Club that got it. There's a, but it's in the Lakewood Estates. It's right in the middle of us. And there's always some confusion by the people who live there who think that for yeah. some reason they can tell the golf course how to run their business. You know, we always have a few people who say, tell them to stop using pesticides. Oh, good. Then we can have no grass. That's a good idea. The fact is that the St. Petersburg Country Club is a completely separate corporation from us. But we have a 
very good working relationship with them. We take care of their property and they take very good care of us. Excellent. Excellent. That's what it's all about. Yep. I got it. Symbiotic. Okay. Exactly. How long have you served as president of the association? 17 years and two weeks to be exact. <laughs> 17 said. years and two weeks as president of the Lakewood Estates Civic Association. You all are doing some great work over there under your leadership, some great work. I want you to uh, share with us some information that was on ABC Action News recently, very recently, and they seem to have done quite an extensive uh, segment on some of the work you were doing. So talk to us, if you don't mind, about the Lakewood CARES program. What happened there was that we decided to have a sort of all-in-one weekend because we have several programs that we take care of on an annual basis, one of which is uh, the uh, food bank. And we have people in the neighborhood who take care of some homeless families. And we knew that Maximo Elementary School, which is right on our 31st Street border, was in very, very serious need of uniforms, underwear for the kids, and socks. Because last year for the school year, we had asked them what they needed, and the answer was everything. So we donated about two or three truckloads of school supplies and supported, I think, 32 classrooms and gave them enough money in the end to build their own media room, which was really great. To build their own they built, media room? They put in a media room. We had a, When Lakewood is asked to give, they give. And so we walked away from the school in the 22-23 year. When they came back to us this year, they had no need for school supplies, but a desperate need because this is a school, unfortunately, like a lot of schools on this side of town, with, in this case, about five dozen children living in their parents' cars. Mm. You know, my question when I hear that is, what country is this again? I just, right. I just can't, I can't put my head around that. It, it was very odd. And so we realized that they needed um, uh, uniforms and, and underwear and clean uniforms and socks. And we went into the process of doing our usual fundraiser, which is a simple matter of my putting out a request for donations. But then I thought maybe Wendy Ryan at ABC Action News could put out the word so that not only would our non-member people know, but I wanted other neighborhoods to realize that there's a need for this and they should be stepping up to help. So I contacted Wendy and she sort of grabbed the reins and took off with it. She came into Lakewood and did interviews with two of our board members who were heavily involved. And then she turned it over to their gives program so that the story about these kids ran on the evening news, I think for five or six straight days. And the result was incredible. The short story is one lady called from South Dakota asking if she could help. Oh, wow. South Between, Dakota. South Dakota. Between what Wendy raised through the gives program and the donations from Julie Weintraub's Hands Across the Bay, uh, the $8,000 came from ABC, $5,700 came from a place called North Star Realtors. Part of the $8,000 that Wendy raised, I believe, came from Julie Weintraub's Hands Across the Bay. We raised about forty six. dollars The total damage was about $18,000, which was just, my, it's still coming in, by the way. Wow. People are still sending us money saying, we need to take care of these kids. Because, of course, what we've discovered is this isn't the only school. Of course it isn't. So we found out there were problems at Bay Point. We found out there were problems at Lakewood Elementary and now Melrose. Oh, boy. So we're in the process of buying notebooks and pencils and pens and underwear and socks and uniforms. And what we're telling other neighborhoods is get in on this. We need who, I think it was the principal over at Maximo who said it's a cliche about a village being needed to raise a child, but this is a case where the whole community is going to have to get together and do it. Right. Yeah, I saw that segment and I did hear that statement from the principal mm -hmm. at Maximo. Uh, that was an excellent 
segment by uh, Wendy Ryan. Yes, she did a great job. But I tell you what, uh, you all put your finger on the scale or your hand on the scale or your foot on the scale, whatever you want to say, and, <laughs> and, and, and brought to our attention something that is so needed in this community. And the way you all have stepped up is incredible. Incredible. But that's only one little piece of your CARES program. That's true. Let's go through some other things. All right. Well, we have a tradition of three programs that we have supported now for about a decade. One is the food bank. We have given thousands of dollars and thousands of pounds of food to the food bank, which with every passing year seems to have a greater and greater need to feed people who can't get a decent meal. We have a program that I'm particularly fond of, where every year in April, we raise money for free swimming lessons for underprivileged children. You know, Florida leads the country in drowning children. We're very, well, 97 last year, 88 this year. It's awful. We, the city parks department has a program where they have a cut rate for underprivileged kids. So instead of the 30 odd dollars it costs for swimming lessons it's 13 dollars and 65 cents so the kids are selected based on the free lunch program by the city and we send in whatever we can donate to supplement that program to get as many kids lessons as possible and so far over a decade we have paid for lessons for 1100 children very wow sad. very nice this last wow. year, the last year donation was three thousand dollars wow i am so proud of that 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 to me is yeah, that's I mean, that's that's 1,100 kids that won't drown, you know. That's yeah. the, the other one we've got is kind of fun. We have, because we're a golf course, uh, people like to throw their animals away in our neighborhood. They come in at night and open the car door and give Fluffy a boot out onto the golf <laughs> course. <Yeah. laughs> it's it's, it's <laughs> terrible. Yeah, I'm very ready. I know you're laughing. Oh, right this, this is what oh, people, and this started several years ago. It got it got so bad that one weekend we had four pit bulls alone in one weekend. I said, oh, we have to do something here. So we got together with uh, animal services, which in this county, thank goodness, has stopped euthanizing animals that are healthy. Other counties do, but we don't. And we got together with them and we raised, we got a program going where we keep a fund called the Animal Fund of Lake with the AFL, <laughs> not to be confused with the other AFL. And if you adopt a stray animal in Lakewood, uh, we pay for the vet bill, the neutering, the initial yeah. exam. Oh, that, oh, that can that can be significant. You know, vet bills are almost yeah. as bad as people bills yeah. when it comes to medical care. So that's those are our three biggies: the animal fund, the swimming lessons, and the food bank. But there's more. There is. Let's talk about it. <laughs> like, the, like the cleanup day and the, the friendly <laughs> reminders and. All those great things you got going on. Well, the good thing that we, that we have done, and other neighborhoods should do this because it's it's easy. And I I have to admit that I stumbled on it rather by accident, but I discovered that the easiest way to communicate is just to set up an email group. It's very simple. When you pay your dues, your email goes into the email group, and every Friday we send out something called, oddly enough, the Friday Bulletin, and. We tell people what's going on. This is where we ask for donations. This is where we tell people about Lakewood Cares. And that that's the basis of our uh, neighborhood. Tom, we call it the neighborhood tom-tom system. And it, it works very well. And, you know, what, what were the items that you were particularly well, interested you, in? I know you had a, a day that you called the cleanup day. The cleanup day, yeah. That's kind of a funny story, actually, because <laughs> we have a new social committee. I've gotten rather up there and I have tired, finally realized I can't carry the whole neighborhood by myself. And I've got a really great board and we put together a social committee and uh, told them to, you know, start holding events. And one of them who's fairly new to the neighborhood said, we're going to have this gigantic cleanup day. We're going to have people with bags and pickup sticks and the city's going to give us all this equipment and we'll do it on Earth Day. I said, Sweet Pea Earth Day is already claimed by other neighborhoods in this city. You should have planned this last October. Mm -hmm. you know? But I and I said, you might have noticed going through Lakewood that we don't have anything to clean up. You know, <laughs> nothing in the streets. 
But what we did was we combined that with an annual event that we call cleanup day. What really is it is, is how to get rid of all that junk in your house that you've been meaning to get rid of for a year. So we have Goodwill come in with their truck for donations. And the city gives us a couple of dumpsters, which, by the way, is never enough. And we um, have people. Oh, we also pay for a uh, shredder. We pay a shredder to come in and do professional shredding. Mm. We have people in Lakewood who save all year with their documents to come and give it to the shredder. We pay for two hours of that. And the social committee put together this year a bunch of pick of uh, food trucks. So people could get rid of their stuff and then walk across the parking lot to the soccer fields and and have uh, some food truck some food truck food. So that was that was a nice little event. I got a lot of activities, a lot of great things going on over in Lakewood Estates based on your leadership. And certainly <laughs> we are pleased to hear it all. Uh, Russ, Jay, which one? Um, do you have any partners? Are you partnering? partnering with anybody as far as you helping out? individually or organizations just as a group? individuals well as i say we work with the food bank mm -hmm. and we work with the city parks department um, the city has been on the whole the individual departments that work with us uh for example uh the neighborhood uh, office susie ahawk getting us the dumpsters uh, whatever we need by way of equipment to do what a the things that we do in Lakewood, we can always count on the city to help us out with like giving us Boyd Hill, help at Boyd Hill to hold a picnic there for the kids. Right. Um, so we can find plenty of people to work with us. That's never a problem. Sure. I noticed in, in 209, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Rick Bacon honored your organization because of the work that you guys do, you know, yeah. and he gave you an outstanding achievement award. Mm -hmm. But I also noticed in 218, Chrysler gave you an award. Now, what was that all about? Every year, well, it, it hasn't happened very much since the pandemic, but traditionally the city has an annual event called the Neighborhood Awards. Uh -huh. And you can submit to the group that does the judging, which is independent of any city organization, but is done with the assistance of the Council of Neighborhood Associations and the mayor's office, or at least City Hall. I'm not sure who does it there. And there are four or five awards. There's best neighborhood, most neighborly neighbor, best communication system. And in 2018, uh, when Rick Kreisman was mayor, they gave us two awards. One was for the best communication system because we had the newsletter, the Friday Bulletin, and I don't even remember what else. We had all kinds of stuff going on by way of communications. And then at the end of the meeting, they pronounced us the best neighborhood in the city. Uh -huh. and I had five people at the table with me, and they were ecstatic. <laughs> it was, that was uh -huh. recognition that we really appreciated because we felt that with the programs that we were doing, other neighborhoods need to do this too. There's no reason why they can't. You know, that's that's my message is out here is just, no, we're not doing anything so special we're just getting together to do what needs to be done right. it's great to get the recognition from the city right. from the mayors appreciate it. there wasn't any money with it but gee whiz, okay. right. we got a nice trophy <laughs> you know, i'll take it okay. uh, that's speak, awesome. speaking of mayor um i hear that uh kim, mayor kim welch lives in uh one of your residents there yes he lives in lakewood Okay, so uh, as one of your residents, does it make you proud that he hails from uh, Lakewood Estates? Well, it did when he got elected. But we haven't heard much from him since mm. he got into office, which is, I have to admit to being kind of puzzled by, mm -hmm. um, when, when, when he got elected in, I guess it was what, November of 2021? 20, mm -hmm. I got that right? All right. Our annual meeting is in January, and this is a perfect place. Rick Kreisman did it to come to the meeting and say, hi, howdy. You know, I'm mayor, and I'm glad to be here, and nice to see you all. It's a, kind of, it's a chance to come out and say hey to the people. Mm -hmm. uh, so I invited him, and I didn't get any answer. Wait, wait, wait. You invited the mayor to come to your meeting, Lakewood Estates. Where he lives. Where he lives. Where he lives, and he didn't respond. Three times. Three times. Three times. The fourth time, I finally got a message that said, 
I already told you I won't be there. Whoa. Wow. Now, first of all, he hadn't already told me. And <laughs> second of all, what kind of puzzled me was the political incorrectness of the phrase, I won't be there. Because I'm sorry I can't make it make sense. I'm otherwise committed makes sense. I won't be there implies that he has a choice of whether to do it or not and chooses not. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was kind of mm -hmm. odd, considering that he can literally walk from his house to where we hold the meetings. Mm -hmm. But that was, we have not heard from him. That is so unfortunate. It is. That is so, and I'm going to say why I feel that first. The way you just said he responded was disrespectful. I thought so. I already told you I won't be there. I won't be there. That's disrespectful. But then again, <clears throat> it's a shame because this is a civic association that is doing some really great things right. in this city. He... Helping families, right. helping kids, helping schools. He yeah. Oh, my God. Well, here's the other interesting thing about Lakewood Estates meetings. Most neighborhoods are glad if they can get a half a dozen or 20 people to a meeting. I know because I people complain to me all the time. Oh, I hate it because we get like, I refer to it as 12 old people and a dog. You know, we can't get a, a room full of people. We get a minimum of 40, have had 50, 60, 70. And in January of this year, we had 121 people. At your meeting. At our meeting. That's <laughs> a great number. Yeah. Mayor wasn't there. Again, I don't think he's been to a single meeting. I went back through my records because uh, I keep all the attendance sheets from the meetings and I couldn't find, I thought there was one, but I couldn't find any meeting where he had signed in. And I, I asked him about it once, you know, how, how come we don't, when he was running for, for mayor, he did call me looking for a donation. And mm -hmm. uh, I yeah. said, you know, I don't think you've been to a meeting. He said, well, I was conflicted out. And I thought, well, we started on Tuesdays and went to Wednesdays. Which day were you conflicted out on? You know, I didn't get an answer to that question either. But you said he asked you for a donation, mm -hmm. but he didn't respond to your emails and texts and phone calls. Well, at that point, he was still running. And I hadn't heard from him at all while he was running it up to that point. And as I say, we never saw him at the meeting. So... I was sort of surprised when he called me and he said, I noticed that you've donated to somebody else's campaign and you, you need to donate to my campaign. And I thought, what do you mean I need to donate to your campaign? That's kind of a strange phrase. And I said, would you like to know why I haven't donated? He said, yeah. So I told him, I said, food bank, you've never given us a dime or a can of beans for the, for the food bank and, and the animal fund and the swimming lessons. And I said, some years I even have to get your dues by going to your house and doing a stick up for your <laughs> <laughs> Well, I always call it when people will pay their dues. Oh, like God. Maybe they come to your house and do a stick up. So sometimes he would pay his dues and sometimes he wouldn't. But that was his occasional dues were, I'm very sad to say, his single and only contribution to the most contributory and participatory neighborhood in the whole city. And I just can't figure it out. Yeah, based on all the great things we've heard you talk about, and we didn't bring you on to talk about the mayor in particular, but all the great things you've talked about, talking positive things, things that ABC Action News spent a whole week talking about, things that got even the developer at Coquina Key, as you told me. What did you tell them what you told me about that developer? Yeah, what did he do? He, oh, yeah, he... <laughs> He's kind of he was very smart because he's had a little bit of pushback on his seven story apartment house, which does have room for affordable housing. And he's got a good thing going over there. But he's some of the neighbors are a little upset because he's not making enough room for a supermarket. And I said, look, the supermarket will come in where the where there's an economic need. You can't force that. But what he did, which I thought was absolutely fantastic, was he reached out to ask for help to start buying stuff for. Lakewood Elementary, which is right across the street from that plaza. So somebody else picked up the idea and said, oh, yeah, we need to do this. I was tickled pink by that. Yeah. That was great. That's smart. 
Well, the developer for Lake, well, I mean, for Coquina Key Shopping Center over there, that developer picked up on their idea and he said he want to get money for Lakewood Elementary School underwear as they got for Maximo. It's smart. And, and it is smart. Yeah. That's good PR. Exactly. Giving with one hand and grabbing with the other. Now, like maybe, maybe we can get the mayor to call you and say, what can I do? Well, mm -hmm. the other thing that, that you should realize here is that under Rick Kreisman's office, and I'm not sure how far back this went, there was an office at City Hall that acted as a liaison to the school system. Mm -hmm. And under Kreisman, that person was let go and has never been replaced. So that when you think about how the city hall group, the mayor could coordinate this effort that's scattered between me and North Star and Julie Weintraub. And I mean, we're all doing our thing, right. but we're doing it kind of alongside of each other instead of as a monstrous, massive group. Right. If there was someone in the city hall who was holding the reins on this, they could contact the school board and say, give us the, the contact information at your schools. Tell us what this school needs as opposed to what this school needs. We don't have anybody to do that. You know, you mentioned Rick Baker, and I will always give Rick Baker his kudos for his uh, education program. Yep. He had a great education program because he allowed corporate leaders to allow their employees to get into the schools and volunteer, take time off, take an hour off, go volunteer. And he also got these corporate leaders to donate money to the schools. He was so active in that regard. If I don't agree with anything else he's done, I'll always agree with that. Well, I can tell you as a neighborhood leader, he was a pleasure to work with. Mm. He was very, well, he was so responsive and so accommodating. It was mind boggling. Mm. I, I adored working with him. Well, and, and the, here, here we are now in a situation where our schools have never been this bad. Our schools are, because of recession, because of the economy, everything is coming back, but not for these families. These, you've still got 60 kids living in their cars in one school alone. Ooh, you know, ooh, that's sad. just one. I do ooh. have to tell you, if I can tell you about what's going on with Bowley, can I talk about that? Let's see. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Very quickly, Bowley is putting up buildings. You know, Bowley builds housing for uh, the, um, people with mental problems and, and drug addicts. They bought some land right at the corner of Lakewood Estates. And we said, you know, it's right next to a doctor's office, kind of a bad spot. So what we'd like to see there is apartments for the working poor, people who can't live in an apartment because their, their um, income doesn't allow them to spend what has to be spent to live right. there. The kids were the, living in their parents' cars. Mm -hmm. And we went to Bowley and asked them to build those buildings for the kids specifically living in the motels on 34th Street and Maximo. And that's what they're doing. That is Outside. awesome. That's great. That me, is awesome. For me, all, everything else that we've done has been spectacular and wonderful and awesome. But for the fact that we may actually put these kids into a room with a right. bed and a bathroom and a shower and a washing machine, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Judy, I can't say it enough. <laughs> and I'm sure my co-host will agree. Lakewood Estates is a shining model yes. Thank you. for all the other civic associations in St. Petersburg. All that you've said to us today has been very strong, very positive, except one little segment. <laughs> um, we but, live in an imperfect world. <laughs> have any churches stepped up? Any churches stepped up at all? Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, um, one of our board members works at a church on 62nd Avenue South, and she got a phone call from Bay Point and asking, I don't know why they contacted her, but they contacted the church, and she passed it back to us, and I said, we've got a church looking to help out with Bay Point Elementary. So it's gone viral. The beautiful part about this whole thing with the schools is that it's gone viral. Right. Okay. I want to wrap it up at this point. And I do want to say, you know, with uh, Fisher, Baker, uh, Foster coming from Northeast St. Pete, mm -hmm. Chrysler coming from West St. Pete, mm -hmm. Ken Welch from Lakewood Estates. We're going to ask Ken Welch, step it up. Step it up, Ken. Step it up. And at this point, we're going to say to you, Judy, thanks for being here. We really appreciate everything we've heard. To my dynamic co-hosts, 
Thanks again for another wonderful conversation. And to you, all the listeners, we appreciate you tuning in to the Ray Tampa podcast on 99.1 FM, The Berg. And we ask that you do so each and every Tuesday evening at 530. And you can also go to YouTube, type in the Ray Tampa podcast and see them all. Sponsorships are welcome. With that being said, good evening.